Okay. A clock is designed to chime once each hour on the hour. The clock is a fault. So that each time it is supposed to chime, there's a constant probability of a tenth that it will not chime. How disappointing. It may be assumed that the clock never stops, special clock, and that the faults occur independently. The clock is started at five minutes past midnight on a certain day. Find the probability that the first time it does not chime is at six o'clock on that day. Well, the first thing is we're going to get our head around what this is actually talking about. Um, it's about this, <coughs> this clock. Now, it either chimes, that means goes bong on the hour, or it doesn't. And actually, in a slightly odd way, we're calling it chiming a failure and it not chiming a success. Something messing with your head there, because what we're looking for is it will keep on chiming and we're looking for the first time it fails to chime. So failing to chime is our success outcome. That's a bit of a nightmare, isn't it? But that's, do we get that that's what it means? So it becomes a geometric progression, a geometric series, where in this really odd way, success has a probability of a tenth, and success is not chiming. Success is, is failure to chime. And failure is doing what it's supposed to do. It's chiming. Weird. So, actually, the, the problem is that the first time it doesn't chime is at 6 o'clock. Well, that's 1 o'clock, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. That's when it's the sixth opportunity. So, part A is really just saying, find the probability that x equals 6, which in a geometric progression is easy, isn't it? That means 5 <coughs> failures, 0.9 to the 5, followed by 1 success. It really, I, it really does feel confusing, doesn't it, to be thinking about the failure and success in these contexts, but that's what it is. Mm -hmm. Which gives us 0 0.0590. To three significant figures. Um, brilliant. What's the probability that it do, the first time it does not chime is before six o'clock on that day? So that's really the question saying to us for part B, probability that x is less than six before six. Now, Whereas with binomial, when we're using the tables, we want less than or equal to as our thing. Remember, actually, the easiest thing to work with with geometric distribution is greater than. Because x being greater than a number means it's that number of failures first. So, these are the possible outcomes. It can take those numbers. We're interested in it being less than 6. That's that. Now, less than 6 is the opposite, the complement, of greater than 5. So when this question said the probability of x being less than 6, it's also saying 1 minus the probability that x <coughs> is greater than 5. Okay, that's what it means. And greater than 5 can only happen if we have 5 failures. So that is 1 minus 5 failures. 1 minus 0 0.9 to the 5 gives us 0 0.4095. Or 0 0.410 if we're doing it to 3 significant figures. There we go, brilliant. Um, now we've got another clock, yes, multiple clocks. This other clock is designed to chime twice each hour on the hour and at 30 minutes past the hour. This clock is a fault, so each time it's supposed to chime, there's a uh, 1 in 20 chance that it will not chime. It may be assumed that the clock never stops, blah, 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 the same time. Again, it started at 5 past midnight. So now, find the probability that the first time it does not chime is either 
at half past midnight, well, that's the first opportunity that it had to not chime, or at half past one. Now, half past one would be the third opportunity that it had to not chime. So we've now got, let's call it Y, because we just want to use another letter. We've now got Y, geometric, same deal, <coughs> it's still a, a success, is it failing to chime? And this question is asking us, probably that either Y equals 1, or Y equals 3. That's, that would be half past midnight, that would be half past 1. And so this one, well again we know how to do this. Probability of y being 1 means that it succeeds, as in it fails to chime the first occasion that it can. And y being 3 means that we have two failures, two chimes, followed by a non-chime. So that's what we're working at for this one, which gives us 1 over 20 plus 19 over 20 squared times 1 over 20, it is 0 0.0951. Again, three significant figures, great stuff. And then it says in the final bit of the question, we're doing well, aren't we? Use the formula for the sum to infinity of a geometric progression to find the probability that the first time it does not chime is at 30 minutes past some hour. Oh, well, actually, the question has already led us a little bit into this. Could we have done something about it being 30 minutes past the hour? The probability that it, it would be 30 minutes past some hour, that just means add up all of the 30 minutes past the hour probabilities forever. Well, let's see what that looks like if we write it out. As is always the case with these, it's better not, not to just sit there thinking about it, but to actually start putting pen to paper to write down what you think it's talking about. So this is the probability of y being 1, plus the probability of y being 3, that would be half past 1, plus y being 5, that would be half past 2, y being 7 would be half past 3, y being 9 would be half past 4, and so on through all of those odd powers, all of those odd values, forever, because the clock never stops, it says. This probability is 1 20th, this probability is 1 20th times 19, square, uh, 19 over 20 squared, this one is 1 20th times 19 20th to the 4, because then minus 1, isn't it, for the probability. This one is 1 20th times 19 20th to the 6. Uh, I've, I've got bored of writing this, so it goes on. <coughs> and they gave us a big hint. They said, consider a geometric progression, geometric series. It's a geometric series, isn't it? The first term is 1 20th. What's the common ratio of this geometric series I've just written down? 19 over 20 squared, isn't it? R equals 19 over 20 squared. Because that's 19 over 20 squared squared. And that's 19 over 20 squared squared squared. And so on. It's not that. That was the wrong thing to say. Yeah, yeah cube. That was, that's better. Which is different to squared squared. Anyway, so this is it. And it said, use the sum to infinity, because I just said that this, this sum that we've written would go on forever. The sum to infinity is A over 1 minus R. It's in the formula booklet, that formula booklet again. So it's 1 20th divided by 1 minus 19 20th squared, which we are going to put into our calculator Get 20 over 39, or 
if you want to, write as one, uh, 0 0.513. And then slightly delayed into the lesson of maths.